different location, different sound. It may be quite boomy because it is a boxy window area I'm filming at the moment. That's just what we have at the moment. I'm just going to see if I'm going to brighten this image up. There we go. This is a vintage disco light. And I'm going to warn you in advance that you're, you're not going to see much inside this because uh, it's not got a lot in it. It's basically got three lenses in the front, a clear one, a red one and a yellow one or amber one if you so prefer. And I'll plug it in and I'll show you it working. So it's now powered up and it's got beams light coming out the end. You're not going to see an awful lot because it's at close range. It's designed to work at quite a throw, but it projects your three beams. It, it doesn't actually go like that. It certainly doesn't go to the beat of the music. It just lights. And I'm going to unplug this now before it gets too hot because it's one of the old halogen type fixtures. So let's tilt it up and take a look at the back where there's a fan running. And it says, do not mount near flambeau materials. This is wise. Do not restrict airflow, fan grills, etc. And that was the death of these things with party poppers and people firing silly string stuff like that. It went and it got tangled up the fans. When the fans stopped, it caused huge problems in them. Uh, lamp 300 watt maximum. This one probably has a 500 watt in it because uh, that's what happened. Uh, working temp approximately 100 degrees Celsius, internal thermal cutout, auto reset, and this appliance must be earth, blah 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 blah, disconnect from main supply before replacing the lamp. It has a fuse, this is nice. Uh, unlike a lot of the Chinese crap, it has a real fuse and it's, it's earth. That's nice. So if I open this up now, and keep in mind that uh, these days it's all LED, there are similar effects out there. But it's all LED, but this, from a distance, projected a flat line. It projected those three sections of colour. And the way it does it is incredibly simple. There's no electronics at all. Unless you count the fan, which is, well, it's not an electronic fan, or or the thermal cutout. So if I slide this off, first, first, uh, first, thing, to note, first thing to note is that because the light coming out the front is a very small percentage of what's actually being used inside, there's this uh, baffle. You've got the air vent here, and if that was uncovered, light would just spray out. It was such force that, you know, it would be a disco light in its own right. So on the inside of this, there is a light shield that's designed to uh, overlap that in just the right way that's going to allow plenty of airflow, but no light's going to go out. So I'll just put this out of the way. The light source itself is a linear halogen lamp inside. And they're using that just as a, a line of light that then goes through these lenses. Let's see if I can get one of these lenses out. The lenses tend to be held in by metal tabs. It has a lot of uh, vents. It's got the vent in the bottom, it's got vents in the sides, it's got the fan at the back, lots and lots of cooling because these things did get very hot. Am I going to be able to get this lens out? Let's see if I can hook my finger around this metal tab and show you one of the lenses. It's just a, uh, there must be a name for that, oval lens. And that's fundamentally, if, if I've got a light here that I could shine through that, I don't have a light here that I could shine through it that's, that's handy, but you know, it's not gonna do much, particularly at this close range. It was designed to work at a fair distance. So you've got your halogen lamp and you've got the reflector. I don't know why they bothered it with the reflector as such. It would almost have been better with a black back background so all you saw was the white line of light. But you've got the thermal cutout here that is on the met metal mounting plate so it's going to cut out if the fan does get stalled, hopefully. It will cut out and I'm guessing that there's a very good chance that if you just left it running it would also cut out because these things were not rated for continuous operation. And then it's got a traditional 240 volt fan in the back. Nothing like a low voltage fan or anything like that. Everything is just super simple. Mains come in, goes through the fuse, feeds the fan, feeds the lamp. And the control system would have just been, uh, it would have perhaps been sequenced from a remote switch pack that would have cycled through different effects in the rig. And when this was brought on, it would just flatline the beam out the front and that was it. Very, very simple effect. One of the thing advantages of uh, using the halogen was there'd be a slight thermal inertia, it would dim up just naturally and dim back down again. So it did provide a rich, warm, colourful light, particularly with the red, orange and yet, uh, white lenses, because they uh, are nice warm colours that would complement the halogen output. But that is fundamentally, that this must date back to 1980s perhaps, not really sure. 
but that's more or less what the sort of many of the disco lights were and other ones got a bit more sophisticated they'd have the same halogen lamp or they'd have a couple of them for me across i've got another light that i'll show you at some point like that but they had on a geared motor so the actual lamps rotated with slip rings so it projected sort of a moving cross but those things consumed about 600 watts at least or if the djs put 500 watt, 500 watt lamps in them it would be one kilowatt the thing would use and you compare that now to the led projector lights that you get and you know they're so bright for just literally tens of watts that uh, there's no comparison but it's well worth taking a look at some of these old ones because they're quite inspiring in the simplicity of their construction.